hello viewers, uh, welcome to the CC Gurukul live lectures. Uh, today being our last lecture on the series on photosynthesis, uh, we would like to know in details about certain alternative carbon fixation mechanisms and how nature has circumvented various shortcomings that we discussed on the last turn uh, on our topic on photorespiration. If you remember viewers, we had been talking in details about the negative aspects of photorespiration and how it affected the productivity and how it was a wasteful process in case of the C3 plants. We had also seen just a glimpse of some of the immense selection pressures that were ex uh, exerted by nature and in terms of evolution, it resulted in some sort of a mechanization, some sort of a modification which led to the origin of uh, the present day uh, hatch and slag plants and the cam plants. We will have a detailed discussion on, on these uh, different aspects. Uh, to begin with, we should first realize that most of the plants in the world are the C3 plants or the so called Benson Calvin plants. And uh, it had not been right from the beginning uh, that uh, the levels of uh, CO2 dwindled and oxygen levels uh, began to rise. This is a story as we mentioned earlier about uh, 300 and million years ago when uh, the autotrophs or the photoautotrophs uh, underwent what we call as the popular term as the oxygen revolution. And uh, there was a gradual reduction in the carbon dioxide levels and the rise in oxygen levels it began then. Now, this oxygen revolution triggered a series of adaptations which were now necessary to handle the problem of uh, photorespiration because photorespiration was, uh, was really impinging and robbing the plant of its, uh, of its valuable uh, carbon. So, these selection pressures actually helped nature to engineer, to modify, to manipulate different types of alternate pathways. And this uh, engineering was perhaps on two fronts. Number one, uh, why not release carbon dioxide in the vicinity of Rubisco so as to avoid oxygen fixation? This was imperative because a Rubisco as we saw on the last turn uh, ha is, is a bifunctional enzyme and it has active sites for uh, holding both that is carbon dioxide and oxygen and uh, by a mere conformational change uh, it could uh, align with either of them depending upon which of the components was in a higher concentration. So, if somehow a modification could be made in nature where more and more of carbon dioxide could be concentrated and sent say something like of a courier in the vicinity of, of uh, Rubisco that would definitely uh, avoid oxygen fixation and it would result in lesser and lesser of photorespiration. But at the same time you remember the utility of uh, photorespiration was that it also recovered uh, ammonium ions and it had uh, a very important role to play in, in uh, nitrogen metabolism. Perhaps this is the case uh, why the genetic engineering has not been so successful so far so as to remove the gene for photorespiration because it is a complex process and it also involves uh, three organelles. So, the engineering on the second front uh, was with a mind to avoid the use of ATP and uh, the reductant that is NADPH which was required to recover the ammonium ions. Uh, this type of selection pressures were of course uh, made in nature not in a single day. It was an evolutionary process, it was a very very prolonged period of evolutionary 
adjustments which finally led to the uh, evolution of various strategies and these strategies they were uh, adopted for active uptake of carbon dioxide and bicarbonate ions from the surrounding environment. Uh, we have to now stress on the role of bicarbonate ions because very few people know that it is not di uh, carbon dioxide which is being directly fixed. Carbon dioxide needs to be uh, converted into bicarbonate ions, a situation which is a beautiful parallel of what happens in human blood. Uh, when there is uh, the, the, the functioning of the removal of carbon dioxide or the addition. So, that means if these bicarbonate ions could be, could be given uh, in the vicinity of uh, Rubisco, then things would uh, work in such a manner that uh, the oxygenation property of Rubisco could be curtailed and as a result uh, the reduced photorespiration would eventually lead to an increase in productivity because that is the most imp uh, imperative point. Nature has uh, engineered basically two types of carbon dioxide concentrating mechanisms and this is done with a view to improve the carboxylation efficiency vis-a-vis -vis the oxygenation efficiency. These two mechanisms are uh, the biophysical mechanisms and the biochemical mechanisms. The biophysical mechanisms uh, are the ones which involve the operation of carbon dioxide and bicarbonate pumps at the plasma membrane in uh, cyanobacteria, eukaryotic algae and aquatic plants and uh, uh, the role of uh, aquaporins is also very important because they actually uh, they, they facilitate the inflow of uh, the bicarbonate ions and carbon dioxide uh, in addition to their other uh, routine functions. And the second strategy of carbon dioxide concentration would be the biochemical mechanisms uh, of which we are going to talk in details today. And this would be primarily by the synthesis of four carbon compounds before reaching the Benson-Calvin cycle because uh, we have not mentioned of any four carbon compound in the Benson-Calvin cycle as such as the, as the first stable product and so on. So, that means uh, this is a type of a, of a bypass by which uh, the carbon dioxide can be concentrated or trapped in the form of an alternate compound and that particular compound then goes uh, into another compartment or at another time of the day and then it releases that carbon dioxide to uh, Rubisco and does the job of uh, sugar formation. So, uh, we have the two uh, pathways namely the C4 or Hatch and Slack cycle which is popularly called as the HSK cycle and the CAM metabolism which is crassulation acid metabolism. Both of them are very interesting engineering feats of nature. How they have circumvented uh, the, uh, the need to dispense with or to minimize the process of uh, photorespiration. <clears throat> Before going into the details of both these cycles, uh, it would really be uh, worthwhile to understand the concept that uh, what is the path of carbon when it reaches uh, the, uh, the chloroplasts. Uh, inorganic carbon has to actually cross four different barriers before it can really enter Calvin cycle. By entering Calvin cycle, we actually mean before it comes into contact with RUBP and, and the uh, Rubisco enzyme. First is the cell wall. Then after cell wall, uh, the periplasmic space and then in the plasma membrane itself. Please do not forget, plasma membrane is, is a uh, selectively permeable entity and therefore, uh, lots and lots of uh, dynamics is involved and selectivity is involved in uh, passing through this barrier uh, because it has so many pumps, gates and channels. Then through the cytosol or the cytoplasm itself and finally through the chloroplast envelope because 
the benzyl galvanic cycle has to take place in the stroma and then in this uh, context the equaporins they are uh, very important because they are going to be helpful in uh, transportation of carbon dioxide the c4 pathway or the uh, hatch and slack cycle has a very interesting uh, history uh, it was the russian scientists uh, korshak and uh, karpilov who in the 50s for the first time provided a conclusive evidence that there was something else other than calvin cycle they fed uh, the radioactive carbon dioxide that is with the radioactive carbon c14 uh, to the sugarcane plants and maize plants uh, in light just for a few seconds and they wanted to find out whether the metabolism in these grass species is also the same as uh, the benzyl galvanic cycle to their surprise they found that most of the label was in the form of four carbon acids there was no clue of uh, pga which is the principal first stable product in uh, benzyl galvanic cycle and instead there was a four carbon compound organic acid malic acid and aspartic acid and nowhere uh, pga was to be found now this was the first idea that perhaps there was a different pattern of photosynthesis being operative in some plants especially the grass species uh, which uh, was uh, different than the benzyl galvanic cycle and uh, it was then found that malate subsequently would convert to uh, 3 pga because eventually uh, we would see that uh, calvin cycle has to operate to form sugars so it was the two young uh, australian scientists young at that time hatch and slack uh, who in 1966 elaborated and uh, elucidated the entire pathway and uh, it was then called as the hatch and slack pathway it's operative in uh, in sugarcane in uh, zea maize that is corn so this is an alternative carbon dioxide fixation pathway which we call as hatch and slack pathway in uh, literature we find that this particular pathway is also referred to as uh, hsk pathway because we should not forget the contribution of the russian scientist korshak so it becomes hsk pathway or simply as c4 pathway because uh, the first stable compound in the the whole cycle is uh, is a four carbon compound and uh, incidentally both uh, oaa that is oxaloacetate and malate they are dicarboxylic acids uh it is also usually referred as dicarboxylic acid pathway or abbreviated sometimes as dap it all means uh, one and the same thing these particular pathways of uh, the c4 cycle are so unique that nature has somehow tried to keep oxygen away or rubisco away from oxygen by increasing the the concentration so that means uh, this is a major carbon concentrating strategy because uh, there is a limitation the co2 level is less and uh, somehow the oxygenase activity of rubisco needs to be minimized and if you minimize the oxygenase activity naturally the photorespiration associated energy losses are automatically uh, minimized so what are the unique features of uh, the c4 plants this is one of the examples as i said before of biochemical carbon dioxide con uh, concentrating mechanism the initial fixation of the atmospheric carbon dioxide would now be done by a new enzyme because uh, we have seen what problems uh, are faced when the whole of the charge of photosynthesis is bestowed upon uh, rubisco so this alternative enzyme is uh, pep carboxylase or phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase now this has 
of very high affinity for uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide uh, uh, that is even up to 2 parts per billion as compared to uh, the C3 cycle which could operate at 50 ppm as the threshold. The most important aspect in C4 plants is that there is in fact a spatial separation of uh, PEP carboxylase and rubisco because this is very essential. If both of them are separated, then only carbon dioxide can be concentrated and uh, it could be couriered to uh, rubisco. So, that means this process where rubisco is working and the one where PEP carboxylase is working should be actually taking place in two morphologically distinct cell types and they should be separated by membranes so that uh, the, the, the uh, products can be exchanged whenever possible and they are actually exchanged. So, this type of evolution of uh, compartmentalization uh, has been made possible in nature by the evolution of a very special type of anatomy uh, which is called as Kranz anatomy which again itself is unique. Uh, if one looks at the anatomy of a dicot leaf, then it is a pretty straightforward uh, internal structure where the vascular bundles are embedded uh, within the palisade and the spongy parenchyma and these cells uh, of the mesophyll have, uh, have ample uh, air spaces for the respiratory gaseous exchange. In sharp contrast, uh, the vascular bundles in case of C4 plants are uh, morphologically and anatomically distinct. Uh, morphologically, I said that the leaves are narrow, uh, the typical monocot ones and uh, the vasculature is uh, surrounded by concentric and tightly packed bundle sheet cells and in turn these bundle sheath cells are surrounded by loosely packed mesophyll cells. So, this whole architecture gives us the appearance of a wreath. Wreath means uh, something like a pushpa chakra and this is called as Kranz anatomy which has a very interesting history. Uh, this is not a new discovery. Uh, actually, the wreath like configuration of bundle sheet cells has been known from as early as 1884 when uh, the German, the great German anatomist uh, Gerhard Hebeland, he observed these uh, type of anatomy and he also named it as Kranz type of anatomy because Kranz in German language means a wreath although there are so many Germans who have a surname by Kranz. But this here it means a typical type of orientation of the bundle sheet cells uh, surrounded by, uh, by a ring of uh, mesophyll cells. And it was Hebeland's sharp eye that had really uh, pinpointed even at that time that somehow this anatomy was related to some sort of a compartmentalization and some sort of a division of labor uh, between the mesophyll and the bundle uh, sheet cells. He could not pinpoint the exact physiological mechanism, but uh, uh, he, had, he had an inkling. So, uh, this is the uh, Kranz anatomy and these two cells are not only different in their orientation even their plastids which are present, they are of two different types because in a dicot we have never heard of two different types of plastids. They are all of the same type, they have grana, they have light reaction in their grana and uh, Kelvin cycle operative in their uh, stroma. But then when it comes to the anatomy of a C4 leaf, there is a characteristic presence of dimorphic plastids. And it is not that uh, that their morphology is just different, their uh, physiological functions, the localization of enzymes and the production of products is also quite different although they are connected to each other. <coughs> the mesophyll cells which are the outermost, they, their plastids are granal. So, they have grana whereas the uh, 
plastids of the bundle sheath are much larger in size that is they are bigger plus they have abundant starch. Now the very fact that the plastids have abundant starch that means uh, they have something to do with the Kelvin cycle because uh, benzyl Kelvin cycle ultimately is going to uh, result in the formation of sugars and starch and uh, no doubt both these uh, cells type of cells they are connected by plasmodesmata. If we view a, an electron micrograph one can clearly see the plasmodesmatal connections between the cells of the mesophyll and those of the uh, bundle sheath. The latter that is the cells of the bundle sheath abound in, in starch grains. However, you can see that they have no granule organization, only the photosynthetic lamellae they are scattered. Now, this type of an internal structure has a bearing on its physiology also and there is a distinct division of labor. The mesophyll cells it is seen that they perform usual functions. What do we mean by usual functions? That is the ones which are being performed by a normal plastid that is non-cyclic light dependent reaction which is going to result in the formation of an entire assimilatory power that is in the form of ATP and NADPH which is needed for benzyl Calvin cycle and of course photolysis of water and the evolution of oxygen. Surprisingly, the cells of the peripheral system that is the mesophyll they do not perform Calvin cycle and it is very natural had they been performing Calvin cycle then the whole rationale of C4 plants was not there because we do not want the Calvin cycle to be exposed and its enzymes to be exposed uh, to carbon dioxide in the first instance we want concentration of carbon dioxide. So, the uh, instead we have a new trapping enzyme in the form of PEP carboxylase which is going to function in cells of the mesophyll. The bundle sheath cells they will perform now unusual functions. What are these unusual functions? They want more ATP. So, for this they do not have the, 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 the whole Z scheme uh, for, for non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So, they will uh, now uh, engage themselves in cyclic light dependent reactions and that means by cyclic light dependent reactions only one photosystem would work and uh, there is no machinery for the photolysis of water and uh, that means uh, you must uh, uh, remember from the earlier uh, lectures then that means that only PS1 is operative and uh, a lot of ATP would be generated but very poor amount of uh, the NADPH and likewise very little oxygen. So, that means uh, the grana are not working much as far as uh, in fact there, there is no grana it is only the lamellae. So, they are not functioning much but the basic function here is that the, the stroma of the uh, plastids of bundle sheath they are performing the usual Calvin cycle and they abound in RUBP carboxylase because they have also have oxygenase. But then when we supply concentrated amount of carbon dioxide then uh, the carboxylase function would naturally function. So, to summarize the basic idea would be that uh, mesophyll is going to be uh, the one which is going to take up carbon dioxide, concentrate it and then courier it to the cells of the bundle sheath where the actual benson calvin cycle would be operative. Uh, this whole idea of uh, the compartmentalization uh, has uh, not come in a day. It is a case of evolution and uh, the strategy has developed uh, after long, long time of, of the selection pressures. Uh, we can divide the C4 cycle in uh, 5 distinct stages and uh, these stages would be shared by uh, the cells of the mesophyll and uh, which are surrounding like a wreath and the cells of the bundle sheath which are surrounding the vascular bundles. Uh, 
the first aspect which will take place in the mesophyll would be trapping of atmospheric carbon dioxide mind you as uh, bicarbonate ions we will be talking about this and uh, the, the, the trapping enzyme the new alternative enzyme would be uh, pep carboxylase and PEP that is phosphoenol pyruvate which is a 3 carbon compound would be the primary acceptor it would form oxaloacetate and malate both of them are 4 carbon uh, organic acids and then uh, once they are formed they will be transported uh, to the bundle sheath through the plasmodesmata and there will be various uh, carriers which would be performing this job. Once in the bundle sheath the third stage is uh, involving the oxidation and decarboxylation of malate. So, that means the 4 carbon is decarboxylated into pyruvate this is what the Kelvin cycle wants and carbon dioxide is released and of course, oxidation would mean that it would involve uh, NADPH. The pyruvate would now be transferred back into the mesophyll cells and uh, the conversion of pyruvate would be taking place in the mesophyll in the form of uh, PEP. Uh, the basic idea is that the carbon dioxide is released uh, in the bundle sheaths. We would see in details that uh, carbon dioxide is going to be taken up twice, once by PEP and the second time by uh, RUBP which is in the normal uh, Kelvin cycle. So, that means it is a case of, of uh, double fixation or fixation one by uh, one. By, uh, one. Uh, the basic outline diagram gives us 5 different stages which we have to study in details uh, in succession to find out exactly what is going on in the mesophyll cells and the cells of the bundle sheets. So, in the step 1 which is the, the uh, initial step of carbon dioxide fixation, uh, the bicarbonate ion is the one which is the initial substrate mind you and not carbon dioxide. Uh, imagine carbon dioxide would first dissolve in water and uh, in the mesophyll cytoplasm and then it will get uh, ionized into bicarbonate ions by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. Uh, viewers you would appreciate that this reaction has to be very very quick and it is almost parallel uh, to the ones that we have in our lungs because uh, uh, there also the uh, carbonic uh, uh, anhydrase is present and this particular enzyme which has the EC number of 4.2.1.1 it is also nicknamed as carbonate uh, dehydratase it is actually a zinc containing uh, metallozyme and you must have uh, read about this that it is an enzyme which is considered to be nearly perfect and it is considered to be the fastest enzyme in terms of its uh, turnover. The rate of about 106 reactions per second is, uh, is uh, really colossal and it is this carbonic anhydrase activity uh, which is related to the photosynthetic rate. Faster is the rate of CO2 pickup even the small amounts more efficiently would it be concentrated and it would pass through the mesophyll cells into cells of the bundle sheath for the operation of Calvin cycle. So, in other words this enzyme could also serve as a biochemical marker for the productivity in terms of the amount of sugar produced or alternatively in the form uh, of the number of carbons which are fixed uh, because this enzyme is basically to sequester uh, carbon and to, to make it available for Kelvin cycle. So, that means phosphoenol pyruvate is entirely dependent on uh, the carbon dioxide which is being supplied through carbonic anhydrase in the form of the bicarbonate ions. And uh, even in camp plants a similar process would be there. So, the phosphoenol pyruvate will be catalyzed uh, with the reaction with the bicarbonate ions by the enzyme 
phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase which is a new enzyme that has been introduced in evolution. The best part of the story is that this enzyme is not sensitive to oxygen. So, that means it is not a bifunctional enzyme. It is not like Rubisco that it can change its mind and become an oxygenase when oxygen is more. So, that means a very high affinity for bicarbonate ions. It can, it has been seen that uh, PEPCO or PEPCase as we, as we call it can fix carbon dioxide many, many more times uh, as compared to Rubisco. So, this is of definite advantage. And then OAA which is a 4 carbon compound would be reduced to malate once it is formed and the enzyme here is malate dehydrogenase. Now, during this reaction of the formation of uh, malate dehydrogenase, uh, NADPH is used. Now, this itself is uh, one of the extra expenditures uh, that we are mentioning now in addition to the normal Calvin cycle. Because the end of our discussion, we also have to talk about the energetics. How much is the input of energy and how much is the productivity? So, this malate which is a 4 carbon compound now is going to have what is called as the step 2. The step 2 would be that after the formation of malate, malate has to be transported to the bundle sheet cells because carbon dioxide is now being taken into these cells in the form of malate and not as bicarbonate as will be done directly in uh, the Kelvin cycle. So, the step 3 would mean when this 4 carbon malate reaches cells of the bundle sheath, it undergoes a twin reaction where it is oxidized as well as decarboxylated. And uh, in this process, uh, pyruvate is formed and carbon dioxide is released. Now, it is this carbon dioxide which is now released in a concentrated form in the close vicinity of Rubisco. During this reaction, NADP is reduced to NADP malic enzyme and there are various other enzymes like PEP carboxykinase to give back NADPH. So, the NADPH which we uh, consumed in step 1 is now uh, balanced. So, the net gain is uh, nil. The point is that what carbon dioxide is being given to the uh, Rubisco and which of the carbon dioxide is fixed, incidentally they are identical. And this has been proved by labeling experiments that the carbon dioxide molecule which was released in the bundle sheath is the same which was fixed into OAA in the mesophyll cells. So, that means this is a deliberate engineering to ensure that carbon dioxide is uh, released in a concentrated form for the Benson-Calvin cycle. Now, the carbon dioxide is fixed for the second time because Rubisco is in the bundle sheath and uh, uh, this particular grana has no uh, contact with the outside world and it is entirely dependent on the carbon dioxide uh, brought by the malate. So, this fixation is called as the second fixation and uh, the now in the C C3 cycle it gets incorporated, sugars are formed and uh, starch can be formed if required. The step 4 would be that the pyruvate which was formed as a result of the breaking down of malate has to go back to keep the whole cycle going. So, it will go back into the bundle sheath. Uh, from the bundle sheath back into the mesophyll cells through the plasmodesmata and there occurs the fifth and the final step which is very interesting. The conversion of pyruvate into phosphonol pyruvate would actually involve the phosphorylation of two molecules of pyruvate and as a result the pyrophosphate which is formed uh, needs to be now converted by the expenditure of 
two ATP molecules rather than one. So, that means an additional molecule of ATP is required to transform ANP into ADP. The enzyme here uh, is the dikinase which is the pyruvate phosphate di uh, dikinase and therefore, the PEP which has to be regenerated in order to keep the whole reaction going uh, would uh, require 2 ATP. Now, this is an additional uh, expenditure that the this plant has to incur if it wants to deliver carbon dioxide in a concentrated form for Kelvin cycle and if it wishes to minimize or nearly eliminate the wasteful process of photorespiration. Uh, just to have a very quick uh, recap, the mesophyll cells, uh, the reaction and the reaction of the bundle sheet cells and back into the mesophyll, this uh, would be to and fro. Uh, if one looks at the overall rate of the reaction, we find that in this whole sequence, NADPH which was being utilized uh, which was being utilized is now regenerated. So, there is no energy input as far as NADPH is concerned, but 2 ATP are distinctly being utilized. So, if one looks at the net equation, uh, it would mean that ultimately 2 ATP are consumed and the fix this is only for the fixation of one carbon of the carbon dioxide and for formation of sugars uh, that is C6 sugars, we, we require 6 carbons. So, that means for the fixation of 6 molecules of carbon dioxide through this pathway, one would really require 12 molecules of ATP within the C4 cycle itself and then this will be in addition to the 18 ATP molecules which are being uh, utilized in the benson calvin cycle. So, a total of ATP requirement would be of 12 plus 18 which is 30 ATP per 1 molecule of glucose synthesized. Now, this is a fairly expensive proposition because we have to think in terms of 30 ATP versus 18 of uh, the C3 cycle, but then nevertheless one have to be very realistic. The C4 pathway which is uh, spending more energy, uh, more ATP in, uh, is is not uh, going waste because one process is eliminating the wasteful process and let us see what is the final outcome. At the same time, uh, we should not undermine uh, the Kelvin cycle. This particular pathway which we call as the C4 pathway is, cannot uh, work independently. The Calvin cycle is the main cycle because the sugars are going to be formed there. So, that means we should view this whole uh, set of reactions as being an adjunct, as being a, a, a modification of the basic C3 pathway because the C3 uh, pathway is the basic pathway and the C4, the so called Hatch and Slack cycle, is, is, is the one which is a machinery to concentrate and to deliver this concentrated uh, uh, carbon dioxide to Rubisco. Uh, the energy cost if we compare again it comes to uh, 30 ATP uh, versus 18 ATP of the C3 cycle, but then as, as we say that uh, the rate of carbon dioxide fixation is almost 2 or 3 times but then it has to come with a price, you have to spend more energy. And in the ultimate analysis, the C4 plants are definitely much more productive because the wasteful process is not there. So, that means if there is no photorespiratory loss, especially at higher temperatures when the environment is hot and dry, uh, then I think this additional cost uh, is worth it. Uh, because uh, the such plants which are the tropical grasses, they, they have to endure um, high temperature and, and dry uh, sunny conditions. So, that means in the ultimate analysis, the, the gain in terms of uh, productivity more than compensates for the additional energy uh, input that has been uh, incurred. Now, this uh, statement 
gives us a logical uh, question to ourselves and that is if the hatch and sac pathway helps to prevent photorespiration why won't all the plants have this adaptation in other words what is the need of having c3 plants in the world itself when you have a more productive uh, uh, system going on now this is a question which uh, nature has to answer and we cannot answer this question why because we cannot simply choose which pathway has to be used that means we have to find out what is the evolutionary history of a species what are the selection pressures that the uh, the ancestors of such plants uh, had to face and it is believed that it is these tremendous selection pressures which must have uh, been incurred in our ancestors that is in the ancestors of the plants and they had a mutation and this mutation caused an adaptation and it is so lucky that this mutation turned out to be favorable for these plants and a compartmentalization of spatial isolation was created which had the uh, processes occurring in uh, two uh, distinct yet connected compartments so as to have a more productive type of a uh, of, of of a system so that means this question itself uh, we we need not answer this question so one very important aspect that we have to remember is that uh, we have not uh, seen any report for the c4 cycle occurring in the lower plants why we mention this because the cam cycle does exist and therefore the evidences are in terms of evolution that uh, the plants since they are having so many different types of families which show c4 cycle it must be a case of independent evolutionary origin and uh, the origin of the c4 plant itself or the pathway itself is in response to low carbon dioxide levels and there was a need a dire need to concentrate it in order to compete with oxygen of course uh, co2 levels was the deciding factor we should not forget that arid conditions are also an important factor if not as important as the uh, as relative levels of carbon dioxide and oxygen <clears throat> uh, crans anatomy makes a very interesting study because uh, we have uh, now uh, reached a conclusion that crans anatomy uh, possessing leaves of plants are definitely much much more efficient than the c3 plants and they do occur in a, in a wide variety of uh, the families uh, most of them are monocots but then there are many dicot families also and uh, it is very interesting to note that there are many families which have genera for with both c3 and c4 species now that's a very interesting aspect from the evolutionary point of view and we can even translate it to the physiology level do we mean that the enzymes or the machinery for c3 and c4 plants exist in all the plants so it's a matter which type of environmental condition is is manipulating or dictating out of the selection pressures which type of a metabolism uh, the case of a plant uh, which is uh, a triplex is very interesting one of the uh, members of a triplex uh, genus that is a triplex petula is a c3 plant as you can see it has a normal c3 anatomy with the palisade and spongy parenchyma and a triplex rosea which is growing under conditions of water stress under conditions of high temperature Uh, seems to have a c4 uh, type of anatomy and a c4 cycle it has distinct bundle sheath cells uh, which are surrounded by cells of the mesophyll and a typical crans anatomy uh, an attempt was made to cross 
these two species and to see what happens. Uh, interestingly, the F1 hybrid shows intermediate anatomy. It is neither fully uh, crans nor uh, fully a typical C3. And when the F2 generation was seen, it had a mixed that is a variety of uh, um, progeny which had C4, distinct C4 and C3. So, that means this is a very interesting situation which makes us to conclude that enzymes specific for C4 photosynthesis are already present in C3 plants. The question is why do not they work always? Because it is uh, something like an evolution which is being monitored by changing regulation and tissue specificity of the key enzymes depending upon what is the kind of selection pressures in evolution, which finally led to the physical separation of carbon fixation uh, from the Kelvin cycle. There are actually variations among the C4 cycles also and it depends as to the release of carbon dioxide in the bundle sheet cells can take place uh, by different ways. We know that uh, carbon dioxide has to reach uh, through the concentrating enzyme, uh, it is fine. But then the nature and intracellular location of the decarboxylation catalyzing enzyme that is the final enzyme which will break malic acid or oxaloacetic acid or in cases the other organic acids into carbon dioxide and, and the other compounds which can uh, come back into the mesophyll would also be variable. And on that basis, we have a category of NADPME enzyme type, NADME malic enzyme type and the PCK that is the PEP carboxylase type. So, these are variations which do occur in different uh, uh, genera. What is more important is that we have just discussed about such an elaborate and complex uh, machinery and internal differentiation. Is C4 photosynthesis possible in single cells? It is. That means, here is a case where is there is no Kranz anatomy and the carbon fixation does play, take place without it. Uh, there are examples of uh, for example, uh, by inertia species and the, which is a member of Amaranthaceae and Sueda which is a Chenopodium member. They are all growing in uh, uh, Chenopodiaceae member, they are growing in hot, dry and high saline environments and they have a single cell photosynthesis. Imagine within a single individual chlorine chyma cells. Although we cannot see any partitioning of, of different cells in a tissue, the chloroplast itself is partitioned into two distinct cellular compartments because the basic idea is isolation and there is a central compartment and a peripheral chloroplast compartment. So, that means the both type of uh, carbon fixations as we discussed in case of the C4 plants, they are there. And uh, they, there are examples of unicellular protists like the diatoms and algae. We find that there are plasma membrane bounded bicarbonate pumps. They are going to accept bicarbonate in the cytoplasm and this bicarbonate is going to be transported to rubisco rich carboxysomes. The carboxysomes are specialized protein rich micro compartments which contain enzymes for photosynthesis. Actually the carbon dioxide is concentrated with the help of carboxysomal carbonic hydrase and then it supplies it to rubisco. Uh, as luck would have it in evolution, wheat and rice are our principal monocots. Theoretically, they should have been C4, but unfortunately they are C3. So, that means less productivity is seen in them uh, uh, when we compare it to maize and sorghum. Do not you wish that they were C4 plants? The whole process of uh, green revolution 
would have to be revisited. In fact, there would have not been any need for that. This is only a wishful thinking. Uh, the basic idea is that uh, their evolution that is wheat and rice must have not exerted so much of uh, the selection pressure so as to engineer a C4 cycle. <coughs> uh, we have to uh, give a little idea of the CAM metabolism also. Basically, the crassulation acid metabolism occurs in the dry conditions and stressful conditions and uh, uh, we should spend uh, uh, a little more time on this in details or on one of our next lectures to uh, find out as to how the rhythms of a crassulation acid metabolism take place and uh, how they are also concentrating the uh, carbon dioxide and making it available to the uh, rubisco for the functioning of photosynthesis.